It is a great privilege to be with all of you as we begin another week together, a beautiful spring morning and uh, uh, I guess our full first full week of spring. Uh, we are going to be continuing in Luke chapter 20 verses 9 to 19 today. So join me if you would in reading that text. He went on to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers, and went away for a long time. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant, but that one also they beat and treated shamefully and sent away empty-handed. He sent still a third, and they wounded him and threw him out. Then the owners of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my son, whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they, excuse me, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said. Let's kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. And when the people heard this, they said, God forbid. Jesus looked directly at them and asked, Then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has been the cornerstone, has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, and anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. The teachers of the law and the chief priests looked for a way to arrest him immediately, because they knew he had spoken this parable against them but they were afraid of the people. So this is, this is an incredible uh, teaching, that, incredibly important teaching that Jesus gives. It's actually in response to the first part of chapter 20 with these religious leaders asking about the authority of Jesus. And, and if we think about uh, the Old Testament and the way God has worked in the world, we can quickly see what Jesus is trying to tell us. God sent the law to his people so that they might follow him in the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And then God sends the prophets that the people might follow his path. And we could list any number of prophets. And God sends kings and, and, and voices and men and women, judges, to stand and to proclaim God's will and God's work for his people. But God's people, Israel, continues to reject him. So finally, as we open in the New Testament, God sends his son. Surely, these people that have been given authority on earth by God, these people chosen by God, will listen to what God's son has to say. But of course, we know they reject him, they kill him, they crucify him. What Jesus is saying to these Jewish people excuse me, specifically these religious leaders. You will not have God's blessing forever. You will not be God's chosen people forever. You've rejected over and over and over again. And I'm giving the kingdom to those who will accept. You see, the reality is the kingdom of God does not belong to any one group of people, any one people group or nation or, 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 or race or ethnicity, anyone, anything. The, the kingdom of God belongs to every single person who would accept Jesus Christ. That's the only distinction on this earth that makes a difference. Have you accepted or have you rejected Jesus Christ? He, Jesus goes on to quote Psalm 118 saying that, that er, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. He's saying, you are rejecting me, but I'm going to be the one that God builds his kingdom through. It's a hard teaching. And we could easily stop right now and say, well, we're not part of the Jewish nation. We're good to go. But we all have to ask ourselves, are we rejecting people because they're not a part of our group? Are we missing God's will for our lives? Are we disobeying his commands because we want to remain in power? Are we totally rejecting God to do things our own way? We're saved by grace. 
But we have to follow God's plan if we want to remain in his will. We have to follow God's way and God's mission if we want to be a part of his blessings, a part of his kingdom, a part of his work. We have to come to God and serve and live on his terms if we want to be used. We've talked about this before specifically. Uh, I think about in, in Revelation, uh, John's letters, or Jesus' letters through John to, to the seven churches and the church in Ephesus who's lost its first love. Essentially, I, I, I say that, that, that we can put ourselves on the bench while still remaining on God's team. We're st- we can still be a Christian, but remove ourselves from God work all together. Is that really where you want to be? Do you really want to be someone who is actively rejecting God's plan in this world? Because that's what's happening here. When God calls, what will you say? Will you say yes, whatever it costs, whatever it takes? Will you say yes, even if it means losing a favored position? Even if it means you're uncomfortable with the way things are done in church or, or, or somewhere else? Will you say yes to Jesus, even if it means abandoning all your traditions and all the things that are your preferences? Standing only on God's word and God's plan and God's mission. The danger that the religious leaders, the Jewish religious leaders, and the religious men and women were guilty of, the sin that they were guilty of, is the same sin that tempts you and I every single day. So as we're seeking God's kingdom on this earth and in eternity, let's not lose sight of the God who made us, the God who loves us, and the God who revealed himself through his Son, Let's follow him and do things his way and love the people that he's put before us. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you how it speaks to us and specifically to the situations we find ourselves in, though it was written so many years ago. Help us to be faithful. Let us be a people who are devoted wholly to you. Let us look to your Uh, way. Let us follow Jesus Christ, the revealed will of God to us. Help us to be found obedient so that your work may go forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you all. Love to to be with you every day. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow again right here at 11 o'clock. Have a blessed rest of your Monday. Bye.